Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are cooperating with chords again. I believe, actually, we are at the end of the Cooperating with Chords series, if you can believe that or not. And uh, today we're dealing with polychords. Now, polychords is not something that is natively supported in Finale, so you're going to have to do some hacks, and I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this. Um, so first of all, if the chords are very simple, if the bottom chords and the top chords are just simple major chords, uh, what we can actually do is just use the underscore, uh, which is the, the third way to do the uh, alternate bass notation, and it will sort of look okay. So if we do D underscore C, um, what you'll get is something that looks like a D major chord over a C major chord. In this context, you'll understand that to mean that. However, technically, Finale is just considering this a D major chord over an alternate bass note of C, right? So this will work with the next one as well, which is just G underscore E flat. That's just perfectly fine. A if there's a suffix in the right hand, it's fine too, because you can do D7 underscore C, and that works as well. The problem uh, arises when you have a, a suffix in the left hand. So in this case, if I tried D7 underscore C7, um, it's not going to work because, again, with if, you know, Finale is considering this an alternate bass note, not an actual chord symbol, and you can't actually have a suffix on an alternate bass note. It doesn't make sense, so that's not going to work. It's just going to delete that suffix. Uh, same thing with the minor chord, unfortunately. You can't even have a minor chord because uh, the... Uh, the M character, CM, for minor is considered a suffix, so it's not going to recognize that. It's just going to give you a, a, a C, basically. So this will work in limited circumstances if you're just doing um, major chords in the left hand like that. It'll work, but otherwise it's not going to work. So we do need another hack, and I have three different ways to do this. I'm going to show you all three ways, and you can kind of decide which one works for you. Now, all three of them involve the use of the alternate chord technique, which I showed you in a previous video. So that's where we're going to start. What we're going to do is type the bottom chord first. So we'll type C, and then the up arrow, and then D, and then spacebar to uh, move our cursor. And you'll see that we're sort of almost there already. We have the D over the C. We're just missing the line, which sort of indicates that this is a polychord. All right, let me go ahead and fill out a few of these other ones. So E flat, up arrow, G. This next one is C. Again, start with the bottom chord, D7. And this next one will be C7, up arrow, D7. And let's just go to the end here. This is C minor, up arrow, E7. And this last one is D9, up arrow, F minor 6, all right? So now I've got the chords there. I just don't have the lines. So there's a few different ways to get these lines. The first way is with the Smart Shape uh, tool. And we do have the Smart Line tool. Of course, we can access that with the L Meta tool. Um, I don't like doing this, though, because when you press hold down L, uh, you can't actually constrain the dragging to the horizontal. So uh, preferably, you would actually select the tool from the palette. And then when you hold down the Shift key, Finale will allow you to simply draw a horizontal line. It won't, uh, it won't uh, angle that line at all when you try and move it. Um, otherwise, it's, it's difficult to get a horizontal line. Now, the trick to this is that you do have to be very precise about where this line goes. It's very easy to get it not quite in the right place, so you will have to kind of uh, make some adjustments here. But, you know, this this will work. And as you can see, I'm filling in some more here, and everything's good. Again, it's just a little finicky because you got to get that line in, in exactly the right place. All right? So that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it is with an expression. Now, the, the advantage of using an expression is that it's a little bit easier to uh, nail down that positioning exactly. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a new technique text that's just going to be two underscore characters. And I'm going to make sure that my positioning is exactly where I need, to it, need it to be. So I'm going to uncheck that use technique text category positioning. We want to center justify. We want to just uh, center of all note heads. And where, we, where it says vertical alignment, what we want to do is choose the staff reference line. This way we can pin the, uh, the offset to the, the top line no matter what. And uh, this is where it's going to take a little bit of trial and error in your file. It depends on how high your chords are um, uh, you know, relative to the staff. So this, this number is going to be very different uh, depending on your file. But in my file, I happen to figure out that it's 0.375 should give me a good number. And click OK and assign. 
and you'll see that now I have that line sort of automatically positioned for me. I don't have to deal with it very much, and we're good to go. And then I can simply, oops, that's the chord tool, simply add it here, and it's good to go. Now, what you'll notice is that um, because that's actually two characters, the length of that line is fixed now. So uh, you will actually have to create probably a few of these. So this one is two underscores, so what I can do is just create a secondary one here with three underscores and use that one instead on the D7. That will look a little bit better. And uh, probably on this F minor 6 over D9, we'll probably need a third one um, with four underscores. So just add another underscore there. And that should probably look OK. And again, with this, sometimes the uh, positioning is not going to be quite right. So you will sometimes have to uh, nudge it a little bit to get it into place. All right. So that's uh, sort of hack one and two. It bo they both involve using the alternate chord uh, lines here. And you'll see that it will work just fine. I've got a couple with the line tool and a couple with the expression tool here. The disadvantage of both of these ways of doing this is that when you move your chords now, if I were to move the chord baseline, look what happens. It does not move those other elements because those other, other elements exist in other tools, right? So unfortunately, the huge disadvantage to this is that you can't actually uh, move everything as a unit. In fact, even uh, you know, if you try and grab everything, you're, you're not going to be able to because they exist in different tools. And as we know, even with the selection tool, we can only drag one thing at a time. So it would be kind of you know, uh, tedious to drag three different things here uh, with, the with the selection tool. So all that being said, I'm going to show you one final hack version of this. And I'm just going to very quickly delete all of this so we can start over. And that is to do this all within the chord tool. Now, the trick to this is that instead of creating an expression to uh, use to make that underscore character, we're going to create it as a suffix. So let me just type a chord in here so I can get into the suffix editor here, or the suffix uh, selection dialog box. And I'm going to create a new suffix, OK? Now, what the suffix is going to be is simply two underscore characters, very similar to the way I did this in the expression tool. So the first one's going to be an underscore. And again, with these uh, values, I happen to find out in this particular uh, default document chord suffix uh, library, uh, it's best to put a vertical offset here of 0 0.01 for all of these underscores, right? So now I have one underscore with a 0 0.01 vertical. I press next. I'm going to add a second underscore, again, with a 0 0.01 uh, vertical offset. And click OK. And now what I've created is a suffix that's just that underscore character, right? And um, what's nice is that you know you can add it to your chord, and you'll see that it will sort of go after the chord as a suffix. But the thing about the way you enter chords in Finale is that it's possible to add a suffix without the root. So I could simply type 7, for example, to get that seventh suffix without the root, which is kind of uh, handy. So if you see where I'm going with this, what we can do, combine that with the alternate chord technique. So type the bottom chord, press the up arrow, and then add a suffix. Now, you do have to take note of what ID that suffix is because we can type the suffix directly by using the colon key. And I happen to know that that was the 178th suffix, so I can type colon 178, press the up arrow, and you'll see that it will create that line above the bottom chord. And then from here, I can type D. Now, the issue with doing it this way, as you can clearly see, is that that top chord is going to be too high. And the reason for that is that Finale is considering the spacing as if there was a chord root here. Okay. However, uh, I'd still prefer this because, uh, as you'll see, as I'm going to uh, continue on with this, so we're going to do E flat up uh, colon 178, up G, go to the next one. Now, this is going to be similar to the expression where you're not going to have... Uh, or you're going to need more than one uh, line. For example, this one's not going to be long enough. So let's go back here and actually create a second one. And actually, while I'm at it, I'll create the, the third one too. So duplicate this one and edit it. And we're going to add another um, underscore. So there's the second one. Let's add a third one, again, with a 0 0.01 offset. OK, so now we have that suffix with three underscores. Let's add a third one with uh, four underscores, edit, next, 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 underscore, again, 0 
And uh, so now we have three underscores. And again, just take note of the number. So that first one is 178, 179 for the medium size, and the long one is 180, okay? So now when we do this, actually, let me just retype this one. We'll do C up uh, colon 179 for that middle one, D7. All right, let's keep going here. C7 up arrow. Let's do the middle one again, so 179 up arrow d7 let's do this one which is c minor up arrow i think this is also the medium size one so colon 179 up arrow e7 and then finally this one i'm probably going to need the long one so we'll do d9 up arrow colon 180 up arrow f minor uh six right and uh, so now we've, we've got the chords in here with the obvious um, uh, problem that they're the top chords a little bit too high. Well, once you have them all typed in here, it's actually simply uh, a question of selecting them and then with the shift key held down, just dragging them down into place all at once, just like that. And now we have uh, polychords using suffixes as the, uh, the, the dividing line between the chords, right? Now, as you can imagine, the reason why I did this is because now, in the chord tool, when I move the chord baseline, everything will move all at once, which is super, super handy and uh, you know really important. And even if I had to drag one chord, so remember that each of these poly chords are sort of three elements. So if you lasso select that whole situation, you can drag all of them around uh, in, in, uh, in concert like that. So that's, you know, that's a, another advantage of doing it this way. All right, so um, this is my preferred method. It's actually, cr you know, creating a, a new suffix with the underscore character, but uh, there's some other ways to do this depending on uh, what you need to do, how simple it is, and all that stuff. So, all right. So I hope that's helped. That has been the polychord hack. And um, again, I think this wraps up the Cooperating with Chords uh, series. It's been a long one, so thanks for sticking, sticking with me for it, and I really appreciate it. And uh, come back soon. Hopefully I'll have some more videos in a new category uh, coming up not too, not too long from now. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.